Back in Biz was a live stream reading event originally broadcast in the winter of 2021, featuring episodes from the Solve It Squad animated series being developed by Tin Can Bros. These are those episodes. Cold open. Interior Solve It Squad Clubhouse night. Keith is in the zone, frantically working on a laptop. Next to him are empty cans of Mountain Dew Amp Game Fuel Zero. He prints out an image of a young executive and tacks it up on a police board full of notes. Keith's eyes have dark circles under them like he's been at it for quite some time. And swallow my pride, I would choke on the rinds, but the lack thereof leave me empty inside. Scraggs and Gwen shuffle in. They clearly don't want to be there. What the actual fuck, Keith? Haven't you ever heard of working nine to five, like Dolly? Yeah, this better be good. I was in the middle of a meeting. Trust me when I say nothing could be more urgent than what I am about to show you. Wait, Scraggs, like, who were you meeting with if it wasn't us? I, I can't really talk about it. So. Oh, you're in a fight club. Esther rolls out from under a table wrapped in a blanket and covered in a pile of rags. He's in recovery, dummy. They stare at Esther. What? I'm laying low for a while. Esther, that was supposed to be private. Privacy is an illusion. Esther pulls down their pants and sits on a trash can to pee in front of everyone. <clears throat> uh, well, uh, I'm in a support group for people with complicated relationships to food and uh, talking helps. So. Scraggs shoves some gum in, into his mouth. Very hip, Scraggs. I used to go to Al-Anon all the time. It really helped me develop meaningful connections with so many of the top casting directors. The biz really takes a toll on some people. Team, I called this emergency meeting of the squad because I have been duped. And by extension, that means we've all been duped. Interior Clubhouse Day flashback a few months earlier. In January. Keith, si Keith sits alone at his computer. In January, I, I backed a Kickstarter for a new party game from Corporate Jerks, LLC. The company is famous for their line of hoverboard coffee makers, so I know whatever they had coming down the pipeline would be Gucci. And guys, this Kickstarter was so tight. Dope video, a great reward, and most of all, a killer name. They called it The Game. They call the game... The game? Fucking sick, right? <laughs> I immediately sold all of my Hot Topic stock to back the highest possible tier. Keith's imagination, day. As Keith describes the game, we see it play out in his mind like a video tutorial. When the squad interjects, they appear as Wii Sports versions of themselves. Here's how it works. Two players face off along a, no a long, narrow table with cups on either end. The goal is to toss little balls across the table and into the other player's cups. Like beer pong. No, not like that. Because if you sink one of your opponent's cups, they can flatten it into a disc and throw it into a little slot at the other end of the table for double the points. Oh, like frisbee golf. Uh, uh, no, because because each round has a time limit. And after every turn, the players stop the clock, massively upping the stakes of the whole thing. Like speed chess. Interior clubhouse night. Present. No, it's not like anything else. It's fucking sweet, okay? But... <sighs> Here's where things went sour. It's been five months since I backed the campaign, and in that time, no emails, no updates, no rewards. But Keith Swanson doesn't just tap out when things get tough. I have done some digging, and I am pretty sure I discovered a massive Ponzi scheme at play here. So, who's ready to help me expose these dicks? An awkward silence as he lets that sink in. Then, plunk. The sound of Esther's turd hitting the bottom of the trash can. If they're a big company, why were they doing a Kickstarter in the first place? Um, marketing, babe, obviously. <laughs> uh, I don't know, Keith. Stealing money via a very public crowdfunding campaign doesn't really add up. Have you tried messaging them on Kickstarter? No, and that is why we need the full might of the squad behind this one. Esther pulls up their pants and begins to roll back up into their blanket like a human burrito. Wake me up when we get something interesting, like a serial killer or a hamburglar. Sorry, Keith, but this case just doesn't have the chutzpah people have come to expect from the Solvit Squad. Gwen and Scraggs turn to leave. Wait, 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 wait! Remember from my 12th birthday when you all gave me that personalized coupon book? Oh, yeah. Sort of, I guess. Keith pulls out a ratty construction paper booklet. 
still got one left. <laughs> he tears out the remaining coupon titled Boss for a Case. Notwithstanding natural disaster, personal emergency, or being grounded, the very special coupon of this very special birthday boy may use this coupon at any time to enlist the squad to do whatever he sees fit for one whole case. Your name's below. Expiration date, never. Consider this coupon cashed. Keith beams. Esther screams into their blanket. Back in 1995, four meddlesome teens and their talking dog Kluber achieved pseudo-celebrity status by solving mysteries that had somehow stumped adults. They call themselves the Solid Squad. Cracking cases in the 90s style, showing crooks crime never pays. But then Kluber got murdered in a satanic ritual and everybody went their separate ways. Flash forward. Esther's been on LSD every other day. Gwen went into acting to pretend the pain away. Action. Act one, exterior corporate jerks, jerks HQ day. Keith's shitty VW van putters to a stop in front of an ultra modern beachfront office building. Enormous neon letters in front read, Corporate jerks, welcome to the crushing factory. The gang exits the cramped van and admires the beautiful campus. Oh, this place is hip AF. It's like Disneyland for tech bros. Don't judge a crook by their cover, Gwen. A fresh-faced valet runs over to the van. Good afternoon. May I park your car for you, sir? No, we're good, man. Well, that was a rhetorical question, sir. We're required to park all visitors' cars to keep the roundabout clear. Listen, buddy, the van stays, or you talk to my fists. Okay. Um, can I interest anyone in a complimentary coffee or a tiny water bottle? Ooh, complimentary, sure. Sounds uh, great. Coffee sounds great. I'll take a matcha. The valet takes a sidelong look at Keith and jogs away. Anyone else getting douche vibes? This from a guy who schmeagled a 16-year-old fake coupon and then threatened a minimum wage worker like a Republican. Keith, I, I know you feel wronged, all right? But it's probably best to approach this investigation from a neutral perspective. We'll get more info out of them if we're polite. Gwen wanders up the driveway, scoping out a good photo op. Keith, take a picture of me jumping in front of the neon sign for my grid. Keith fumbles with her phone. Gwen throws up peace signs and prepares to jump. Suddenly, a gaggle of drones overhead buzz past towards the shoreline. From out of the waves emerges Tucker Bossman. He flips his hair out of his face, flashes a smile, and adjusts his junk. Who is that? That is who we're here for. Tucker Bossman, CEO of Corporate Jerks. Tucker walks onto the shore as the drones surround him, blow drying his hair, and they dress him in a crisp suit with no tie. He's sexy, extravagant, and more impressive than Keith in every way. Uh, not gonna lie, I like a man who programs robots to do his bidding. <laughs> Tucker dictates messages to his flying entourage of drones as he approaches the building. Cancel my four o'clock and uh, let Jillian know that I'm not gonna hesitate to blow up the entire deal if we don't do things my way. Beautiful morning to conquer the world, huh, friends? Fire air day, Mr. Boss Man. <laughs> Yes! Yes! Get it! Get it! Please, please, call me Tucker. Tucker flashes a million dollar smile. Gwen swoons. Keith scowls. <laughs> Tucker spots Keith's van parked in the roundabout. Ah, oh, oh, I, I, God, I gotta fire the, the new valet for letting maintenance park out front. Gross. Anyway, can I help you guys find someone? Uh, now that you mention it, we do have a few questions. Oh, because yeah. we are journalists from the Mayberry Times, and it would be our great honor if we could have a few minutes of your time. Right, Keith? Keith literally swallows down his rage and nods in agreement. Mm, journalists, huh? You must be the uh, paparazzo, huh? Mm -hmm. Hey, Walter, did I have an interview scheduled for today? No, my man. The only thing left on your schedule is nine holes with the bros at 1400 hours. 
Could there have been a technical error? We're certain we had an appointment for today. I'm hell, maybe. Really, the only thing these drones are good for is not bringing you a lawsuit when you grab their ass, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right, grab a hoverboard. I'll take you on a quick little tour. At the entrance to the building, they each grab a hoverboard off a rack. Tucker jumps on his and does a couple spins for flourish. Keith jumps on one and falls flat on his ass, but he tries to recover and poses like it was on purpose. Oh. Esther sits on theirs and rides it cross-legged. Once Gwen and Scraggs are mounted, a drone flies in between them and delivers the beverages they ordered from the valet. Matcha, nice. Uh, do, do, do you have any uh, non-dairy creamer, Mr. Tucker? Oh, sure thing, boss. We got creamer, we got oat milk, goat milk, cashew, avocado, vodka, <laughs> whatever you want, man, whatever you're feeling. Just all you got to do is say, hey, Walter, uh, he's, our, he's our automated robot. He'll get it for you. Hey, Walter, got any Percocet? A drone flies over and dispenses some pills into Esther's outstretched hand. Hmm. No weight, no human interaction, no government oversight. Five stars. Interior corporate jerks HQ continuous. Tucker and the gang slide through the sleek and spacious halls, passing employees playing video games, meeting over coffee, and a group watching a robotic cockfight. Now, the most important thing to us here is our culture. We don't burden corporate jerks with um, rules or uh, bureaucracy, so that way people can be creative and, and vibe without getting bogged down by uh, working hard, you know? They pass a couple employees sitting on beanbag chairs. Oh, whoa, <laughs> neat chairs. Scraggs, I have literally suggested that we get the ultimate sack 6,000 for the clubhouse dozens of times. And as CEO of the company, if I can't motivate my employees to be operating at their best, then I'm wasting my company's second most valuable resource. What's your first most valuable resource? <laughs> Kish, money, honey. It passed an indoor rock climbing wall covered with employees wearing VR headsets. Looks like you have more money than you know what to do with. <laughs> oh, that wall over there? That wall is crucial to our company's team building program. Scraggs glides by a counter long mixed nut dispenser that says snack station on it and fills a bag full of trail mix without slowing down. Listen, every entrepreneur knows you can never have too many perks. Or avoid too many taxes through offshore shell companies. Exactly, exactly. In America, capital is king. But anybody, just anybody can bootstrap their way up to the unimaginable wealth and success that I've had. Even the pitiful owner of that shitty old van out front. You can quote me on that. Keith has had it. Oh, so that's why you would scam your unsuspecting fans on Kickstarter. They stop abruptly in front of a lounge. On the wall is a banner promoting the Kickstarter for the game. Whoa, 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 slow down there, dog. We're really proud of that campaign. And the focus group, I will have you know, the feedback for the new corporate jocks division has been positively glowing. All right, pal, let's quit it with the foreplay and get down to the real reason we are here. He looks to Esther, Gwen, and Scraggs for backup, but they avoid his gaze. I mean, I was the fifth backer at the Mondo Ultimate tier level, and, and I never received any communication throughout the campaign or any of my rewards. I am pissed off. I am tired of being diddled, and I am pissed off. You're so right. That blows, man. Moreover, I am personally devastated that you had such a poor experience. You know what? Let me let me look into that for you. No, 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 no. Right you now. listen to me. You listen to me. Okay. Okay, okay. Thank you. A drone scans Keith's face and hands Tucker a tablet. Uh, username uh, Keith Swanson. Uh, username Keith Swanson 6969. Yeah, that, right? Yeah. Keith nods. It's, it says here, all your communications were sent to your email, uh, swansong at solvitsquad.biz. Didn't we switch domains to solvitsquad.com years ago? <laughs> Of course you wouldn't have gotten the emails, Keith. And, oh, you know what? Looks like you, we made two attempts to, to deliver your rewards to a treehouse, but UPS drivers can't really climb rope ladders, can they? It's, it's, it's an insurance thing. Wow, Keith, it seems like this is all entirely your fault. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah but I mean, it's not, well, because it's not my, I, I, fine. All good, brother. Mistakes happen. Just last week, <laughs> you're gonna love this. I was gonna terminate my contractor for ghosting me, 
only to realize that I'd given them the number for my old my old burner phone I had. I I lost it on this awesome trip to when I was in Tahoe. But it's totally my fault. It's totally my fault. I still fired him though. He's gone. We're really sorry to bother you with all this, Tucker, but Keith forced us to be here against our will. Hey, no worries at all, my dudes and dudette. Feel free to grab anything you want from the Cathedral of Chips while we've stopped. A buttressed wall is lined with every possible type of chip. Scrag's eyes light up. Wow, sour cream and Old Bay seasoning. I thought they discontinued these. I honestly love it here. Tucker! Do you have a spokesperson for the game? I have some hosting experience, but more importantly, I'm an influencer. Gwen walks in front of the game banner and strikes a pose like she's mid-action. Hmm. Yeah, let's let's circle back. Let's let's just put a pin in this convo because we've reached the final and my per, my personal favorite stop of the tour. R and D. Tucker types on a keypad, opening a door to a high-tech lab. Can't you just taste the possibilities? Scraggs, shoving chips in his mouth, nods in agreement. Interior corporate jerks lab. So these are our most visionary engineers and inventors. He gestures to a few scientists. One of them is Charlie from Spies of Forever. Time has not been kind to him. Well, I mean, this is some heavy tech. I, I fancy myself the engineer of the group. So like, um, game recognizes game. Keith touches a robotic arm with one finger and it falls apart. This room also holds the cutting edge AI core to our five factor security system, which ties together the entire campus. Super cool, super high tech, super impossible to hack. Oh, how interesting. I'll say, Mr. Bossman, for background on the story, can you give me the make of your first car, your high school mascot, and your mother's maiden name? Uh, yeah, duh, of course. Uh, Datsun, Bulldog. Quackenbush. Esther takes out their phone and easily hacks into the system. Their phone reads, access granted. Exterior corporate jerks HQ moments later. Tucker is walking the squad out of the building. Ah, well, thanks for showing us around, Mr. Tucker. What you've got here is very impressive. <laughs> yes, it was a wonderful afternoon. Here's my card for you to get in touch. There's a tiny version of my resume on the back as well. He takes All right. it and eyes Gwen thoughtfully. All right, tight, tight, tight. Please enjoy some complimentary Corporate Jerks merch as a thank you for stomping by. A few drones fly up holding gift bags stuffed with merch for the gang. And here's our fulfillment center where you can pick up your Kickstarter rewards directly. So sorry again for the um, confusion. Our fault. Esther pulls a shirt out of their gift bag that says, Jerks It. Anyone got a double XL? I like my shirts big and baggy. The drones surround Tucker and physically lift him into a fancy convertible that's parked behind Keith's van. So cool. Tucker tries to drive away, but he can't maneuver his sports car around the bulky van. He honks several times. Mm -mm, st shit, seriously? Come on, what moron owns this van? I really don't wanna have to take the chopper. <laughs> Hey, bro, like you said, it's, it's probably some sad, unsuccessful schmuck. We came by foot, so uh, later. Seriously? Keith? Walk away, walk away, just walk away. The gang awkwardly shuffles off. Tucker continues honking his horn. Interior Solvet Squad Clubhouse, evening. Having just returned from picking up the van, the squad climbs into the clubhouse. Esther is swimming in the double XL shirt, which covers three quarters of their body. Keith is holding several parking tickets. How can they ticket me six separate times? One of these is for public indecency. You're lucky they didn't tow you, Keith. I can use squad petty cash for this since it was a company expense, right? Absolutely not. Why did we all have to sneak back after hours to get your van anyway? As team captain, I'm not going to explain my reasoning. Just know that it had nothing to do with my personal embarrassment. You know, that CEO sort of reminded me of you, Keith. Really? Yeah. Huge ego, totally aloof. But then again, he takes care of his body and has millions of dollars. A tear forms in Keith's eye. Thanks, Esther. That wasn't a compliment. 
Okay, you know, I actually thought it was a pretty fun day. So, case closed, and now on to the case of upgrading our snack game. It's not closed. I know it seems like that guy exonerated himself, but I know there is something weird going on. Come on, Keith. Having mediocre tech isn't a crime. It's just a liability. Well, I'll see what I can dig up during our meeting tomorrow. What do you think about this slogan to pitch him? The future is here. And it's righteous. This is one game that can't be tamed. Uh, say, say do, you, do you mind if I tag along? There's a lead I want to follow myself, namely whether they stock honey mustard jalapeno ruffles in that Sistine chipple. <laughs> Hell yeah. Then I guess that means that you're with me, Esther. <laughs> a corporate jerk's drone flies in through an open window and lands on Esther's arm like a bird of prey. The others stare. What? If I have to go along with Keith's ridiculous charade, then I at least deserve to nab a robot friend. I thought their security was state of the art. <laughs> More like state of the- Esther farts. <laughs> I think I'll call him Catherine Zeta Drone. The drone flaps its propellers and plays And All That Jazz from hmm. the movie musical Chicago. Whoa. Act two, exterior fulfillment warehouse day. Keith and Esther approach the front entrance. Esther makes their way to the door, but Keith continues past, heading to the loading dock. Keith, where are you going? Let's just get your prizes and bounce so I can go home and binge some Luther. Slow your roll. They're not gonna just hand over valuable clues with my bomb ass rewards. We need to do some snooping. We'll grab my swag as we go. Esther rolls their eyes, then gracefully slips underneath a loading door that's ajar. Keith follows, but his belly gets stuck and he has to push several times to get through. Interior fulfillment uh. warehouse continuous. Keith dusts himself up, uh, dusts himself off as he gets up. Okay, <clears throat> so the Mondo Ultimate tier lets you experience the game like a true power broker, along with VIP tickets to the poolside launch party this year includes matching shorts, tank top and visor, corporate jocks brand sticker and tote, custom calendar featuring our favorite instant nerd babes. That is definitely going up at the clubhouse, right, Esther? Esther? Keith looks around and Esther has barely moved from the loading door and now is smoking a joint. I'm tired. Don't they have more of those like hover thingies? Uh, there's that. He points to a forklift and they walk over to investigate. Hmm, no keys, no license. Esther takes out their phone, types a few things and the forklift revs to life. <laughs> no problem. They hop inside. Wow, it's like the whole world is becoming the smart houses featured in the Disney Channel original movie, Smart House. Yeah, the only downside is that any schmo can hack your Tesla and turn it to a remote controlled death trap. Buckle up. Before Keith can, Esther hits the gas and they tear off. Exterior corporate jerks HQ day. Gwen and Scraggs approach Tucker. He's wearing expensive workout gear and fiddling with his smartwatch. Hey, Gwen and uh, this guy, thanks for thanks for meeting me so early. TBH, I've got ADHD and uh, a packed sketch, so I'm going to have to multitask with you on the go. Are you cool with that? Scraggs looks through the plate glass entranceway and sees the cathedral of chips in the distance. A bag of chips looks back at Scraggs with sad anime eyes. He puts his hand longingly on the glass. Sure, no problem at all, Tucker. We're totally flexible. Perf. I hope you guys are ready to sweat. Smash cut to interior spirit cycle day. In this room, we ride as one. I'm gonna ask you to give me everything you've got and then give me more. Then reach down deep in your spirit and give me even more. If you don't black out, it doesn't count. Double time. Gwen and Tucker are spinning away as the enthusiastic instructor continues shouting at the class. Scraggs hangs near a juice bar in the back of the room. So I had a couple of ideas for the game campaign. I called an old showrunner friend last night about licensing my character from my old TV Hold show. Hold that thought, Gwen. Beat's about to drop. Meanwhile, at the juice bar. Uh, can I get a chocolate banana smoothie with a dollop of peanut butter and, if possible, sprinkles? Sure thing, babe. Pedaling a bike but going nowhere, not your thing? Uh, I'm just here for a work thing. Well, more like a moral support thing, I guess. And a breakfast thing. I'm starving. You want chia seeds, whey protein, and B12 too? Scraggs looks unsure. Meanwhile, on the bikes. God, I love this. 
A body in motion is a body worth living in. Ain't that right, Gwen? Yeah, totally. Plus, it's nice being just another worker bee in the fitness hive right here. It's it tiresome always being in the spotlight. Now that I can relate to. He starts pedaling at twice the speed. All right, everyone. We've got a shining warrior spirit over here. Let's elevate his power. A literal spotlight shines on Tucker. The rest of the participants applaud while continuing to cycle. Tucker gets off his bike and the spotlight follows him as he walks over to the instructor. Please, please everybody, I'm just like you. I'm just a person who sees what he wants and takes it. What's standing between you and your fantasy of what you can become, huh? The crowd cheers. Tucker mounts the instructor's bike and begins leading the class. All right, I want you all to crush your insecurities. Delete no from your vocabulary and just push through, let's go! Interior fulfillment warehouse simultaneous. Keith rummages through his Kickstarter rewards on the back of the forklift. Esther is wearing a pair of the game sunglasses and reading from the instruction manual. I got almost everything I'm owed, but not even a shred of illegal merchandise. These pallets are clean. In overtime, competitors circle the table when they hear the music play. Wherever they are when the music stops is where they shoot from. This is musical chairs. No, that's stupid. But how cool is this? A player can physically defend their honor using the following moves if they lose by more than half the number of their age? <laughs> that's Krav Maga. That sounds made up. No, it isn't. Okay, so what's your deal? You've got your bounty for this game you're so obsessed with that is literally the combination of sports that already exists. So, like, like what else do you want? Okay, Esther. <laughs> I clearly want justice. Douchebags aren't good people. There's always dirt if you dig deep enough. My working theory is that you're focused on hating Tucker Bossman in order to avoid all the emotional pain stored up here. Esther points to Keith's heart before bringing their finger up to pop him in the nose. Ow. Am I wrong? Interior spirit cycle, simultaneous. Gwen stumbles towards the juice bar, her legs like jello. Tucker, looking radiant, jogs over. The barista is finally finishing up the smoothie as Scraggs clutches for it impatiently. And a sprinkle of ginseng extract. Now, where did I put those lids? No time to chill. We got to boogie to the park. Let's chat more there. You, uh, you game or lame? I'm not lame. Oh, uh, yeah, but my, uh... Gwen glares at Scraggs, grabs his hand, and pulls him away. Scraggs reaches longingly at his perfectly complete smoothie, which stares back at him with sad anime eyes. Interior, park hotel, later. Scraggs, Gwen, and Tucker are seated cross-legged on the floor of a trendy hotel room meditating with a guru. Hmm, follow each thought as it flows by in the babbling brook of your mind. Oh, before I lose this thought, for the print campaign. Shh. Let thoughts dissipate, carried away by a wave of consciousness. Release yourself from your states of physical being. Pain, suffering. Hunger. Scrag's stomach rumbles, making a loud groan. Where did these states come from? Where do they go? Where do they come from? Cotton Eye Joe. Interior Fulfillment Warehouse. Esther sits in a makeshift armchair composed of cardboard boxes. Keith lays on a conveyor belt, holding back tears. And then my dad pushed me and he said, any son of mine wouldn't be caught dead auditioning for Bye Bye Birdie. So I stayed at the ball field all night practicing my pitch. Mm. Seems like he cared more about how you reflected on him. And that's some fucked up parenting. How does that make you feel? It's just now I'm in my early, late, mid thirties and what do I have to show for it? I don't have a cool tech company. I can't hotwire a forklift using my big brain. And I'm starting to think professional baseball is not in my future. Keith catches his warped reflection in the metal air duct above him. I mean, who is this guy? Nobody. Unless he's solving a mystery. All right, that's deep enough for today. My session fee is 150 and I don't take insurance. The sound of a door opening and a group of men entering. 
Well, I'm sure I left it right here. Aw, oh, Jinkles! Jinkles? It's a copyright thing! Esther hits a button on the conveyor belt and jumps on next to Keith. They ride it through an opening in the wall to a secret room of the warehouse. Interior secret room, continuous. Oh, Esther, you distracted me. This is why I repress my emotions. They're dangerous. Hey, this was all your idea. I'd much rather be home watching DCI John Luther get away with brutal but effective policing methods. Esther notices something across the room. Well, well, Govna, do you BBC what I see? Interior Tesla, later. Thanks for practicing with me and Yogi Baba Chad. Don't you feel just so much lighter? Yeah. Scraggs looks longingly out the window and sighs, fogging it up. With his finger, he doodles a remarkably detailed feast. Now that our mind body is one, let's, uh, let's chat some business. Yes. I was thinking that the slogan for the game needs to cast a wide net. Brutish, but sophisticated. Spunky, but relatable. Would you say your target demo is- ah, the, te balls. the Tesla dings. <sighs> Shit, I'm low on juice. Interior Tesla dealership, continuous. Tucker pulls his Tesla into the middle of the showroom. Scraggs and Gwen follow Tucker out of the car and over to a brand new Tesla. He hands an American Express black card to the dealer who swipes it and hands it back with a glass of champagne. Tucker chugs the champagne and gets into the driver's seat. Oh, God, I love a productive morning. Yeah, uh, whatever, whatever you're saying about being relatable works. I like that, that's good. Uh, my man, Mr. Dealer guy, yeah, you can, you can just recycle the old one to combat global warming. Cut to exterior Arctic Ocean day. In the middle of the ocean, several polar bears are floating on Teslas. In the distance, an ice, ice shelf collapses. Interior secret room, continuous. Keith and Esther sift through bins filled with electronic components. Hmm, these look like nanny cams that are being prepped for installation. Whoa, cool. No, surveillance isn't cool, Keith. Nanny should be able to punish those little fuckers as they see fit. Oh. Well, here's more of those shirts we got at Corporate Jerks offices. I'm going to grab five or six, sell them on eBay. <laughs> huh. They were all manufactured with the same strange seam in the collar. A little pocket. Well, no one's going to buy them if they're defective. Hey, what are these little microchip thingies over here? Zing! Esther puts it all together. Their eyes roll into the back of their head and spin like a slot machine before stopping on bingo and bongo. Keith, I think we just found your dirt. Interior Soho house, simultaneous. Really, really, really glad we finally found somewhere private to chat because between you and me, Janine. Reveal Gwen, Scraggs, Tucker, and Janine, a journalist for Wired Magazine, seated at a table in a private dining room. Mark and Jack, they've lost their nerve and we all know what happens when there's chum in the water. Scraggs tries unsuccessfully to flag down a waiter. So. Bill Gates recently called you the bad boy of tech entrepreneurs. Is that an accurate title? I think so. Tucker Bossman is the future of this industry. And it's great that he doesn't have any of that stuffy, much ado about nothing, Silicon Valley attitude. If you need to quote me, it's Gwen Berrywood. Tucker smiles at her. Scraggs tries to flag down a waiter again, and again, he is ignored. You know, my motto is always be disrupting shit outdated industries, social norms, democracy, <laughs> at which point the government will bail you out. Tucker merely glances at a waiter uh, and he immediately appears next to the table. I'll take 100 oysters, please. <laughs> Get whatever you want on me. Scraggs lights up. Uh, Nothing for me. Uh, surf and turf with a starter of chicken carbonara and a side of bacon double cheeseburger. Thank you. The waiter nods and leaves. You know what? I should probably put in my dessert order too. Be back in a sec. Scraggs takes it off to find the waiter. Last question. Why should our readers be interested in your new corporate jocks division? What makes the game undeniable? Well, it's, it's very clear to me, but um, what do you think, Gwen? She gathers herself. This is her moment to stick the landing. There are plenty of games, Janine. But this is the game. You see, Janine, the future is here and it's righteous. This is one game that can't be tamed. Gwen's ears perk up. She flashes back to the previous evening. Interior clubhouse, flashback. 
and it's righteous. This is one game that can't be tamed. Interior Soho House, continuous. Gwen quietly gasps. Tucker just used her slogan, the one she never told him. Hey, why don't you come to our launch party? It's this weekend. You can find out for yourself. Wouldn't miss it. Janine gets up and leaves. Scraggs passes her as he returns to the table. <sighs> okay, I couldn't figure out which dessert to order, so I just got three of each. And one for the table to share. <sighs> Interior secret room, simultaneous. So they've been turning all of their products into spying devices? Even the t-shirts? Oh yeah, they're taking invasion of privacy to a new level. The sound of commotion fills the hallway outside. Keith and Esther look around for another exit. They're trapped. Hey, Brad, are you in the secret room watching Outlander again? We've been made, but my rewards are still in the forklift. I would rather die than leave them. Esther speaks into their phone. Catherine Zeta drone, run program, intolerable cruelty. The drone buzzes outside. Then suddenly, a loud explosion and a pain scream. Oh! I made some upgrades last night. Interior Soho House, simultaneous. Tucker, drink in hand, delivers the punchline of a joke. Gwen laughs, but Scraggs just wraps his fingers impatiently on the table, searching for the food. Say, Tucker, how do you come up with that charming slogan for the game? Oh, I don't know. It just, it sort of, it sort of just came to me in the moment. Really? Gwen, today you have proven that the glass ceiling, wherever, whatever that is, it, it don't need no shattering. You're already a boss, bitch. This, this, which is why I want you to represent the game, starting with the lunch. The food arrives. Ah, speaking of lunch. <laughs> that sounds fine. Sorry to run, but we actually have another appointment. I'll see you Saturday. Oh, oh Gwen, please. No. Gwen drags Scraggs away by the ear. Scraggs looks back at the feast on the table mournfully. The chicken carbonara, complete with crying anime eyes, cries out to him. We'll wait for you, Scraggs. We'll wait for you. Act three, exterior, the game launch party day. On a decked out yacht, Scraggs, Esther, and Keith wander past branded photo ops, booze infused midway games, and a wet t-shirt contest. It's like an even more hackneyed version of MTV's spring break. Esther is wearing their double XL jerks it shirt and is trailed by Catherine Zeta drone. They spot Gwen and wander over to her. She's stationed at a hydration station wearing a branded referee jersey, passing out the game branded water bottles to a British millennial. Is this a now, Jean? I want to make sure it's indestructible if I accidentally run over it with me cyber truck. Have you ever lost a water bottle like that? <laughs> no, just me cats. Gwen notices the gang approach and starts blushing. Hey, Gwen, how's the gig going? Uh, not great. I thought I was going to be the face of the company, not a background player who doesn't even make scale. But I've never quit a job, and I'm not going to start now. This tool is going to pay for disrespecting you, Gwen. At the very least, you should be hosting the bar trivia. He points to a gathering across the pool deck. Okay, next question. How many band members founded the hit musical group Maroon 5? If there's anything to be peeved about, it's the literal spyware. If you're hearing this, we're coming for you, bozos. A shirtless man walks up. Uh, hold on, I have to get back to work. But text me before you actually confront Tucker. I want to be there when we ruin his life. Okay, whoa, there you are. I've been looking for everywhere for you. You represent the game, right? Yes. Amazing. So someone took a huge dump in one of the porta potties and there's shit all over the wall. Can you go clean it up? You know what? I can turn this into a valuable learning experience. There's a first time for everything. I quit. Gwen takes off her jersey and shoves it at the shirtless man. Whoa, nice. A free shirt. The squad walks across the deck and parks themselves on some pool chairs. Keith scans the crowd with a pair of binoculars. A catering drone flies by with a tray of appetizers and some cocktails. Esther and Scruggs each take a sampling. Esther drinks the cocktail like a shot and then takes a bite and immediately spits out the appetizer. <laughs> egg rolls are soggy and bland, zero stars. Scruggs eyes his egg rolls with delight. They smile back at him. 
Yay, Scraggs, you finally did it. Scraggs scarfs them down and grabs more from the tray. So once we locate our mark, we'll have a small window to pull the plug on the DJ and publicly expose these corporate jerks for what they really are, corporate criminals. The catering drone remains hovering near Keith, waiting to serve him. Back off, nerd, I'm trying to think. Keith punches the drone out of the sky, scattering appetizers everywhere. He grabs his hand and whimpers in pain. Esther picks up the drone and starts fiddling. <sighs> nice going, Keith. That was the only food drone over here. Now I gotta go find another one and hope it's not out of chicken satay skewers with peanut sauce. As Scraggs wanders away, Keith spots his mark through the binoculars. Tucker is approaching the yacht on a jet ski, flanked by robotic dolphins in the water. You gotta hand it to the man. He knows how to make an entrance. Tucker launches off a ramp and onto the boat's helipad. The crowd gasps and then applauds. Tucker bows and walks across the deck past the velvet rope and into a VIP lounge. Well, there goes our window. Mm, just a sec. I've got an idea on how to lure the snake out of its hole. Keith steals away. Say, Esther, is Catherine Zeta drone camera ready? Exterior VIP lounge, moments later. A security guard lets a power couple into the VIP area and replaces the velvet rope. Keith attempts to slide past him. Hey, bro, I was just in there earlier. I left my beer. I was just going to duck in and grab it. Badge. Keith flashes his Kickstarter reward lanyard and badge. Security examines it. Mm, wrong badge. The, the couple you just let in had green badges. Different badges. Theirs were Elphaba green. Yours is Shrek green. But I backed the Mondo Ultimate tier. Well, this area is for the Platinum Diamond tier. That wasn't even an option. It just means they were off-platform investors, buddy. They can do that? What? You know, you don't look that tough. <laughs> the security guy pulls aside his coat, revealing a handgun. Keith immediately backs away, tail between his legs. And you have a pleasant day, sir. Interior galley, simultaneous. Catering drones are depositing their empty trays and picking up full ones. Scraggs is sitting on a stool having a full-on conversation with the appetizers. It's not that I always overeat. It's more that I eat my feelings, you know? And food brings me a lot of comfort when I'm stressed out. The little meatball in his hand nods in agreement. Understandable, Scraggs. Scraggs eats the meatball and reaches for a shrimp cocktail. Honestly, the support group helps a lot. Knowing there's a lot of people who struggle with the same thing you do just makes you feel less alone, you know? The key is cultivating conscious awareness about your habits and pausing before you reach for that tub of cookie dough. The shrimp chime in. That's, That's very nice, Scraggs. We get really sad if we don't get eaten. It's a purpose. Thanks for nosting on us, Scraggs. Suddenly, the drones in the room all pause in midair, then fly out. Exterior yacht deck, simulta simultaneous. Scraggs follows the drones to the event main stage where Tucker is giving a speech, a glass of champagne in hand next to a demo of the game. Today is the dawn of a new age because we haven't just created a party game, we've created a party lifestyle. The crowd cheers. And I just, I just wanna say, I just, I just wanna say, I just wanna say mad props to all of our Kickstarter backers that you guys, you're, and without your spiritual and financial support, we'd be nothing. Keith, out of options, jumps on top of an enormous speaker next to the DJ and waves his hands wildly to pull attention. Liar! This guy's a liar! Tucker pauses, and the crowd goes silent. I did, I did not expect that to work. Uh, okay. Uh, sp okay. Speech. All right. Um, huh. You ever wonder... Why corporate jerks are so good at targeting my targeted marketing. <laughs> Why, when you mention to your girl that you need a new piano necktie and then suddenly as if by magic, you get an ad for that very necktie. It's because these jack offs have eyes and ears in all of their products. This man has been using your money to finance a marketing surveillance network. The crowd is silent. This isn't going to work. Tyler Bossman stole my intellectual property by spying on me and used it for his own benefit. Gwen winks at Keith. The crowd starts to murmur. The shirtless man from earlier, now wearing Gwen's shirt, which is way too small for him, speaks up. 
you know what? I was talking about shit earlier, and then I got an ad for corporate jerk smart diapers. The crowd gasps. Tucker's cool exterior begins to unravel. <laughs> what? You're gonna believe? You're gonna believe this chode up here? This chode? Come on! This guy's he's, he's a has been loser. He drives a VW Bannon and, and looks like he hasn't eaten a salad in years. His clothes are from Target. This is a handmade Armani suit. Keith makes his way to the stage, parting the crowd like Moses. You know, I used to believe in corporate jerks, just like you. But the lifestyle they're selling is a deception. And sure, this guy has a jet and an entourage of robots that fly around him like Tony Stark. But I know the real Tucker. This is a lonely boy whose mean dad made him play baseball like me. And maybe if this boy followed his heart and did the spring musical like I did, things could have been different for him. Yeah, I'm a chode who lives in his van. But at least I ended up with some lifelong best friends. And I don't have to spy on people to get close to them like a creep like you. Tucker looks like he's about to cry. And then... You and me, asshole. One game of the game. Winner takes all. Tucker takes off his jacket and tosses it aside. Keith rolls up his sleeves and turns his baseball cap backwards. Esther hits a few buttons on their phone and all of the drones on the yacht circle the game, cameras recording. The boat's jumbotron screens flicker and then switch to the live showdown feed. Gwen stands over Esther's shoulder, live directing the broadcast. And we're live on YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Cut to drone three for the close-up. Tucker's furious face appears on the screens. Cut to Keith looking laid back, but resolute. In the crowd, Scraggs chows down on some popcorn. The DJ starts playing Inside Out by Eve Six. It's the showdown of the century. Each competitor plays the game as if their life depends on it. An epic montage of the gameplay. Tucker hacky sacking the ball, then sinking cups like a pro. Keith circling the table like a tiger, eyes locked with Tucker. He stops and shoots. Tucker slams a timer, wiping away sweat and taking a jello shot. Keith flattening a cup after Tucker scores. He tosses it flawlessly into the slot at Tucker's end while he celebrates scoring a double. After a grueling round, Keith launches his final shot into the air. It circles the rim of Tucker's last remaining cup in slow motion before going in. The crowd goes wild. Gwen cheers for Keith, then catches herself, not wanting to give him the wrong idea. Esther kisses a stranger standing next to them. Scraggs does a keg stand on a chocolate fondue fountain. Ready to defend his honor, Tucker approaches Keith. But with all the cameras recording, he attempts to play it cool. Great game, bro. Thank you for coming out to celebrate corporate jocks. I got a jet. Important, important business back on shore. But um, yeah, have fun. Enjoy the free champs. Tucker jogs backstage with Keith trailing behind him. The DJ resumes playing Yacht Rock and the party begins again. Once out of sight, Tucker spins around getting in Keith's face. You know what? So what if you beat me? So what? Millions of people just watch that stream and are fucking wet for this game. We're still going to market, equipped with everything I need to get unfettered access to my customers. Harvesting all that data just got way easier. Record scratch. The DJ looks shocked. The crowd goes quiet. Tucker looks up to find a hovering drone broadcasting his confession to the world. Scraggs, Esther, and Gwen join them backstage. Stay on him and push in. Hey, Walter, prepare my jet ski. We're leaving. Nothing happens. The drones remain where they are. I think your friend Walter is actually my friend, Catherine Zeta Drone. Esther's army of drones pick up Tucker and fly him off the edge of the boat, dropping him in the water. Now that's what I call the game over. The squad laughs. <laughs> Smash yeah. cut to interior courtroom day. And then he slandered my client by saying, now that's what I call the game over. I object, Your Honor, on the grounds that Keith is so cheesy he can't actually be taken seriously. Sustain, sustain. In the case of the Solvent Squad versus corporate jerks, the prosecution has presented their case clearly and proven beyond a reasonable doubt. 
that the defendant has put spying devices into their products in order to exploit otherwise confidential consumer data. Exactly. And thanks to me, we figured it out. <laughs> this kind of marketing is predatory, morally bankrupt, and highly frowned upon. But it is completely legal. The defendant is acquitted of all charges. Case closed. The judge bangs a gavel. Exterior courtroom moments later. Well, that was disappointing. Yeah, but the silver lining is I was right and you all were wrong. Eh, not bad, Keith. Maybe we'll give uh, more consideration to your ideas in the future. Great, because I think it's time to change the name of the group to the Who Done It Honeys. Eh, on second thought, maybe not. After an entire week spent doing your bidding, sire, I, for one, am thrilled to go back to ignoring Keith. Guys, best 26-year belated birthday present ever. <laughs> Celebration meal? Buca de Papo? Uh, I'd love that, but I have to be back in court for all those unpaid parking tickets and trespassing at the fulfillment warehouse and the destruction of property. And I think we killed that guy at the warehouse, but it'll probably just be a couple months of community service. A bailiff approaches and leads Keith away. Not if I have anything to say about it. Esther types on their phone, and in the distance, the sound of buzzing grows louder, as well as the chorus of cell block tango. People begin running out of the courtroom and offices screaming, followed by the army of Catherine Zeta drones. It is absolute chaos. Keith wiggles out of the bailiff's arms and runs, freeze frame, as the gang dashes away. Solve the squad, solve the squad. Getting back together because life sucks on their own. Solve the squad, solve the squad. Scooby-Dooby-Roo!